Hey everybody, it's Adam Realman here, and that can mean only one thing. It's another episode of Your Personal Record. This is episode 17, but it's slightly different. You might have noticed that I'm sitting here all by myself. I don't have anyone to talk to today, and that's because it was a very busy week. Aside from work and the usual things, I had to take my son back to college in Ohio. So I figured on the way there, as I always do, I stop over at the record shops and I'll bring my GoPro camera and I'll do some on-site recording. We're going to take it on location this week. But that didn't happen because once I get into the record store, all I want to do is shop for records. I mean, I like to talk to the to the proprietors, shopkeeps, the people in the shops, but I didn't bring the camera into any of the stores. And so what I figured I'll do today is just kind of go through some of the shops that I went to, show you some of the things that I picked up. I'm not really a big fan of the self-indulgent um, or the self-indulgent shows where it's just one guy who thinks that he has a lot to say about whatever the topic is and goes on and on. So we're going to keep this one short. But I do want to give some shout outs to the record shops that I went to out in specifically in Cleveland, Ohio. But then, of course, on the way back, I did hit one in Jersey. And now that I'm home, I did go to one on Long Island. And we'll, we'll talk all about that. So drop the kid off at college. I'm wearing my Oberlin radio T-shirt right over here. My son does have a death metal program on Oberlin uh, College Radio. I can't even make heads or tails of what the shirt says but he did give it to me it is oberlin college radio and if you're into death metal i guess check him out online uh all right that said uh let's go through some of the shops so the first shops the first shop that i went to was where's my notes over here was mistake by the lake i like this shop andrew is the uh the shopkeep the owner and it's uh, it's a small shop. It's it's not a very big shop. It's part of like I guess a uh, like a vintage clothing store is right next door. They've got a couple of like maybe vintage clothing and then vintage uh, tchotchkes or, or whatever. And this is kind of the first or the last, depending on which way you're coming from, um, store. And it's it's a standalone record shop. Now, Mistake by Lake is also a record label, so they put out their own mostly punk and hardcore stuff. And um, Andrew, nice, nice, nice guy. I mean, I ended up getting there kind of on the later end and was hoping to, you know, of course, driving from New York to Ohio does take some time. And we allotted plenty of time, but then there was the unloading and then there was all sorts of additional other things. But it went smooth. I can't complain. I'm not going to complain. It went smooth. And um, so my son is nestled off in, in his dorm room over there. And I head right out to Mistake by the Lake. Um, I had been in there before. Andrew, as I said, nice, nice guy. I hope to have him on the show maybe even next week, uh, but certainly within the next couple of weeks. And um, he remembered me immediately as soon as I walked in. And again, I'm, I'm wearing a mask, although in Cleveland at this point, I don't think you have to wear a mask, just like New York. But I, I chose to wear a mask. And once he said that, you know, there was no one else in the store, he was vaccinated. I'm vaccinated. The mask came off. And uh, but that's got nothing to do with anything. Uh, the shop, small shop, they have their own label and there's a mix of everything. It is a lot of cassettes and a lot of vinyl, both new and used vinyl. The prices are fair. Um, you know, a lot to dig through. He's got a really nice disco selection. I always marvel at that disco selection, by the way. I'm not a huge disco. I, as I get older, I think I, I get a little more nostalgic for disco. But all right, let's talk a little about what I picked up over there. So I picked up New York Dolls Live in Paris 74. I probably have at least three or four other pressings of this show. But I, you know, I, I can't turn away a, a, a Dolls album. And um, I mean, it's listen, it's certainly good. I'll end up keeping this one sealed and just shelving it, not even bothering to listen to it, because I'm sure it sounds just like the other four or five that I have. Next up, and this is an interesting one here, uh, 13th Floor Elevators, uh, Fire in my bones right over here so this is a mix of both uh, a tv show that they record and they pull the audio out of and some alternate takes 
of uh, some 13th floor elevators tracks. Haven't opened this one yet, but I am looking forward to uh, to cracking this one open. Um, then, and I should have pulled these out earlier, and I didn't, and they're beyond reach. So um, Andrew ended up uh, giving me a couple, well, three cassettes. Now, uh, they're put out by, and I have to find this in my notes over here, by Das Boot Tapes. And they're sort of like these bootleg cassettes of demos. So there was a television, uh, some demos. There was Dead Boys demos and Fear demos. And I think it's just a one-sided cassette. And, you know, pretty, pretty uh, you know, black and white Xerox packaging, wraparound packaging. Cassette goes right inside. But these things are pretty cool. And I'm going to check those out. I haven't gotten, I have, I have not gotten around to those yet, but I really appreciate um, that little gift over there. And Andrew and I, we, we end up talking about, you know, mostly Ramon's collectibles and stuff. He follows me on the Instagram and I've been posting because of uh, Generator's May uh, vinyl challenge. I've been doing all Ramon's all month and um, I've been posting some pretty wild stuff up there. And uh, well, hopefully you'll have a chance. It's uh, Loud Clown Productions on Instagram if you haven't seen it. All right. So from there, I moved on to House Frau. I would say it's about 10, 15 minutes away. I have no idea which direction because I just set it in the GPS and I go. But House Frau, a, a very, another, another small shop well curated this one it has a uh, a lean more towards well I, let's go with new wave let's go with punk let's go with experimental and electronic music um i've been there a couple of times very very nice it's always the same guy who's in the shop i'm not sure if it's the owner or an employee but it's the same guy the three or four times that i've been in there already and a nice nice guy so uh, as soon as i walked in I was sort of in the, I, I had been wanting to get this, the uh, the new Screamers demos, and um, luckily I got his last copy. Of course, the next shop that I went to had about a dozen copies, but I picked up the last one over here, and we'll talk about that next shop soon. What I like about this shop is um, on a lot of the newer, I should say the still sealed, but the newer releases, whether they're new or new-ish or just still sealed releases, um, they usually put a sticker explaining what it, now there's obviously not you know, very little identification aside from the hype sticker on this screen is what it is, so they label it. But on the next one, you'll see that it is labeled Champagne, which is the band 80s cold wave now this is just you know one of the stickers they usually editorialize on these stickers and you know, oh this is the most amazing dark wave or the most amazing this or this is really cool and this is a total blind buy over here uh, i saw this 80s cold wave never heard of them i said let's let's give it a shot and it paid off this is great so evidently champagne which I guess if you say it the right way, like sounds like champagne, but maybe when you're from Brooklyn, you will actually say champagne. So champagne is a Canadian, were a Canadian band. Um, these, I guess, little recorded output. Um, this is the the album I uh, is called Tant Piss, but maybe it's something else in French, T-A-N-T space P-I-S, not like two S's, not urine, but uh, Tant Piss, 81, 82. And um, yeah, so it was about eight, ten songs, uh, four, seven songs on it. A uh, bunch of French stuff. I'm not even going to bother pronouncing the titles. But if you're a Cold Wave fan, if you like No Wave, some of this is like very James Chancy, even though I think it's just a duo with uh, vocals and synth but they make that synth sound like everything. So certainly worth checking out if you're into that cold wave, new wave, dark wave, no wave stuff. From there, uh, let's see, just about 10 minutes away. It, actually, no, I, I, I'm confusing. No. The... Um, First shop, the first shop, uh, Mistake by the Lake, is about five, seven minutes away from Housefrau. Now you got to get in the car and it's about 10, 12 minutes away to my mind's eye. And this is another cool shop. 
Uh, it's in what looks like an old, you know, old stone bank building. I, I don't know that it is, but it looks like at one time it was probably a bank. And you go in and it's, I mean, this is literally a, a digger's paradise here. Um, there's crap all over the place. And that's what you like. And I don't mean crap. I mean, like good crap, like good records and CDs. And, you know, it's, it's one of those places where the aisles are thin and the stock is, is just a uh, volume, v voluminous volume. It's full of volume. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, use section. Pretty good. I mean, I, I ended up picking up a couple of things here. We'll, we'll go through it. Um, Springsteen, the river. Uh, my son and I listened to this on the ride out to, uh, to Ohio, and I never had it on vinyl, had it, have it on CD, though I can't find the CD. It was on my phone, but um, just gave me an excuse to get this and actually listen to the record. Uh, you can't go wrong with Bruce. I mean, it's some not everyone's cup of tea, but I certainly dig it. Uh, this one here, this is going to be a gift. Amanda, if you're watching, uh, expect this. I, I can't turn down a Reduces record. So, uh, you know, if you tuned into the show a couple of weeks ago, it was we, we spent a lot, a lot of time talking about the Reducers, Richard Bruckner and I. And um, this is a, a killer Reducers album, Cruise to Nowhere. Uh, this will be a gift for Amanda. So again, Amanda, if you're watching, expect that. Um, this one here, this is an, a, a fun one. A couple of weeks ago, uh, I picked, uh, it, was, it was last week, they had a record fair um, out here in Massapequa on Long Island. And I picked up a uh, promo. It had Blue Cheer, HP Lovecraft, and the Hello People. And um, I mean, obviously, you know, judging from the title Loud Clown on the Instagram and the show here, um, I, how, how do you turn that down? But uh, I mean, the back is is, is even creepier, and because uh, because there's four of them, and um, it's good. It's kind of you know pop. I mean, what we call it pop psych, maybe. Um, these guys backed up Todd Rundgren um, on the I believe it was the Back to the Bars album. It's on the it's on uh, ABC. Yeah, again, it's it's just a fun slightly weird record but the songs are going to stay in your head i checked this out only gave it one spin so far so in time i'll immerse myself fully probably won't be putting on the grease paint but i'll certainly listen to that a bit more now let's see oh yeah so these are still from uh, my mind's eye picked up the stimulators yes loud fast rules this was the um issue that was put out just a couple of years ago that is uh, kind of, I, I, from what I understand, fairly hard to find at this point. Um, these guys are great. And a couple of suicide uh, singles. These are the ones that were put out by Superior Viaduct. Also, a couple of years back, I have this one, the uh, Cherry, already. But again, you know, it's it's multiple copies. It's still sealed. Well, I'm not going to get it. And uh, Dream Baby Dream. I have this on 12-inch, the reissue but um, didn't have it on seven inch. So again, you know, I can't turn it down. The next one here, another re fairly recent reissue, uh, New York Dolls Demos. This one put out on Norton Records. And uh, it's again, quite a few years old already. You don't see these around too much. So why I, I don't even know that I have this or I don't. I think I do but I didn't discogs all my dolls 45s and I haven't looked at that. I mean, occasionally I go through them, but that's what we got on that. So now I'm meandering back, back East and um, spent the time in the car alone is about seven hours to go from the hotel in Ohio out to my next record stop station one in Pompton Lakes, New Jersey. And I spent that time listening to the talking Sopranos podcast. Um, Michael Imperioli and Steve Sharippa. Michael Imperioli played uh, Christopher Moltisante and Steve Sharippa played uh, Bobby Bacala on The Sopranos. They've got a podcast has been going on just about a year or so. And I think they started right around the time of quarantine. So maybe it's a, a little over a year. I think they're up to episode uh, 60 something. I caught up with the first uh, probably seven episodes on that uh, on that leg of the journey. And uh, if you're into Sopranos, it's certainly worth checking out. Um, 
speaking of Michael Imperioli, if I can manage to get my chair around here, I did recently pick up, excuse the side of my uh, face over here. Ah, here it is. He's got a band, Zopa. These guys are are really, really good. It's, I, I, it's rock and roll. That's all I can say. It's rock and roll. It's a three-piece, nice, full-sound, garagey at times, replacement-y at times. Maybe we can go a little Alex Chilton-y at times, which would all make sense. Um, and these guys are great. Really dig it. I was lucky enough to gig with them. We had a benefit show for Coney Island USA a couple of weeks ago. And um, Zopa, Michael Imperioli and band um, came down, were gracious enough to give us two songs for our recording and just watching them that close in a basically what was a closed set as we were as we were recording was a lot of fun. So uh, thank you, Michael and Zopa and check out that record. I think this one just came out, actually. On. Uh, Mount Crushmore Records. That's the name of the label, Mount Crushmore. And this is the limited um, sort of bronze on one side, and it looks like bronze and red. It looks like it looks spray painted almost when you when you look at it up close. I guess it gives it that uh, New York street aesthetic. But uh, this one, I think, was limited to like 200 and the black vinyl, um, certainly more. But if you're when I do it in here, if you're into it uh, and you should be because it really is good rock and roll. Check it out. All right, let's move on. So now I, I end up in Jersey. At Station One Records. I love this shop. This shop has got books. It's got records. It's got 45s. It's got DVDs, videotapes. I, I end up buying a significant amount of videotapes every time. This time I didn't get any videotapes, but um, picked up a couple of interesting things. I mean, nothing nothing totally ridiculous on, on this trip, but um, did pick up uh, the Dylan slow, uh, slow Train Coming I'm never really much of a fan of Dylan's Christian rock, but, uh, you know, listen, you can't go wrong. There's, you'll always find something on a Dylan record to enjoy if you're into Dylan. So, you know, except I'm not into the Sinatra stuff, so I can't find anything on those. But all right. Uh, next, uh, let's let's go with this one here. Let's go with Utopia. Now, so there I am at Station One and I'm digging around. And I, uh, you know, took a little bathroom trip for a couple of seconds and uh, came back out to get, wash my hands with soap, of course, uh, came back out. And who do I see but last week's guest, Sal Nunziato. Now, the funny thing is that Sal and I had met in person for the first time at Station One uh, earlier this past year. And all of a sudden now there's Sal again at Station One digging for records so you know it's great to see sal uh you know in person again and um he's digging he's like oh you have this one i said actually i don't i've got a whole bunch of other run grid i don't have i never had any utopia and he said get it side a is is worth everything I mean, it's a cheap record but uh on his on his uh advice on sal's advice i picked up utopia put it on and yes sal side one is aces he said, you know, side two is an investment. You need a full half hour on that one. I didn't have the half hour yet, but I will have some time for that later on this afternoon. All right. Up next, Nash the Slash Decomposing. An interesting record right over here. It plays on any speed. So I put on side one and listen to it first on 45, then on 33. Have not experimented with the 78 yet. But and didn't listen to side two yet. So I Nash the Slash is, is another interesting one. Dave Ennis, one of the earlier guests on the show, my friend from Minnesota. Uh, he sent me a Nash the Slash record a few weeks ago, really dug it, and uh have been on the hunt for more Nash the Slash. Rounding things out at station one, we've got the flesh tones. I mean, how do you go wrong with the flesh tones? Uh just New York City, garage rock, rock and roll. And I 
was for some odd reason missing this one and the price was right over there at station one so i got it but station one if you're in that jersey that I, I guess it's north jersey area it's it's about 20 minutes out of the george washington bridge certainly worth checking out finally so now i'm home and i can unwind and relax a little but yet infinity records in massapequa my, my you know one of, one of the one of the shops that is closest to me uh was calling they were begging now as i'm away in ohio you know i i obviously look at the social media and infinity's posting all these great records that they're you know coming out that they're selling out over the weekend and, and you know the last couple of days i'm not around who's around of course i did get there and picked up the first press of bob mould's black sheets of rain um i never had this on vinyl had the cassette can't find that one had the cd i do have that one just picked up the uh you know well just picked up i mean just ordered uh, you know when it came out the bob mold box set uh which has this but you know you just need the 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 first press of this one certainly wasn't as uh, critically acclaimed or sold as well as as his first solo workbook but this is a killer record right here i mean everything well, not every, most things that bob does is spot on oh also picked up a couple of CDs. I mean, we're being we're going through it already. Uh, at Station One, uh, just some some Lou Reed stuff that I didn't have on disc. I no, actually, I, I had Magic and Loss on disc, but it was a copy that I bought at the library, at like a library sale, like a local library sale. So you know, it has all those library stickers on it, like on the on the actual booklet, not on the case, on the booklet and on the disc. And so here's just a nice clean copy of Magic and Loss, one of my favorite Lou Reed albums. I mean, it's it's one of, certainly one of the most depressing. I mean, Lou Reed does have a significant amount of depressing albums. Um, you know, Berlin, I, I sometimes can barely get through that one. Uh, Songs for Drella, I, I, that's kind of mixed, you know, happy and sad. But this, this one here, I mean, you know, this is like, it's basically listening to someone die. And, um, but you need to listen to that every so often. Uh, ecstasy, you know, one of the later, uh, certainly, you know, Lou albums, uh, love it, love it. Great album. And this one here was a, uh, a German copy of growing up in public, you know, his early eighties stuff, I think is sort of lost. Like it's not really here or there, but all Lou is good Lou. And I happen to like this one a lot. So where are we here? I think I cycled through everything. Oh, no, there's one more thing, the record that's on display. So I finally get home from the trip to Cleveland. And what's in the mail? The new jackpot reissue of Young, Loud, and Snotty, along with the wipers, which I tucked in there. I, I you know, took advantage of that. Save $5 on both of them. But, uh, you know, like, did I need another copy of Dead Boys, Young, Loud, and Snotty? No. I got the original. I got a promo copy. I got a test press. So this is just sort of, you know, it's, it's, it is colored vinyl. Again, this will go in a bag, go right on the shelf, probably never to be seen again until I croak. And then the kids can figure out what they want to do with it. That said, my friends, we're going to keep it short today because I got no one to talk to. I've been rambling on and on for a significant amount of time already if you watch it, you watch it. If you don't, you don't. What am I going to tell you? But I will tell you this, that if you like what you see, make sure you hit like. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, I, I don't know that I'm necessarily all that interesting uh, without someone to talk to, but I, I hope that it was uh, you know just a few minutes of your time and that you can live vicariously through me as I made my way from Cleveland back to Jersey, back home, and all of the exploits and all of the records that I got. Um, that's basically it. So again, now let's let's uh, figure this out. Now this this goes out unedited. I have uh, you know no idea here how to use the editing software, so it was all one take. If I stumbled across some words or mumbled or whatever it is, I do apologize for that. That said, everybody, I'll go back once again. If you like what you see, subscribe and like and leave comments. I I, I answer every single comment that comes. In. There aren't a whole lot on a weekly basis. I mean, don't get me wrong. Once the deluge and I, I, you know, build up the subscriptions there 
we may have to hire someone to do that. But for now, I answer every single comment that comes in. So let me know your thoughts on some of these records that I just picked up. And um, let me know if you've been to these shops. And uh, let me know your thoughts on those shops. And all of those shops will be in the description. So we have um, the first one that I went to. I, I, I can't even listen to look at this. Uh, was Mistake by the Lake. Then House Frau. Then My Mind's Eye. Then into Jersey we go, Station One, Books and Records, and out to Long Island, Infinity. Friends, this has been another episode of Your Personal Record, the show where I usually sit down with someone and talk. Today, it was the pompous solo show. Friends, I'll see you next time. Be healthy, be safe, and hopefully next time I'll have someone here with me that we can review and talk with. All right, until next time. Later, everybody.